Turbulent displays can be found under the distort category right here. And if I apply that to my logo here, it just distorts it in this warpy, weird way. But it's a little bit hard to understand exactly what's happening here on my logo. So what I'm going to do is just make a new solid really quickly and add the grid effect so that we see something really nice and clear square, it has a pattern to it, and it's just easy to visually understand what's happening. I'll shut off my logo and then apply that turbulent displace again, this time to the grid layer. And now you can see much more clearly what's happening. It's distorting the overall image, the entire layer, in this wavy, liquidy way. So what kind of controls do we have? Well, first of all, we have the displacement type. You can change this from turbulent to bulge, to twist, and it's just changing the pattern that is driving the distortion that we're seeing. And you can choose any one of these. I'm gonna leave it to turbulent for now. We have controls for the amount, so I could dial this way back and make it much more subtle, or I could crank it way up until it's just completely clipping out and giving us this really crazy distortion. Then we have the size, which will literally scale the displacement up or down, and you can pretty clearly see what's happening there. But even just to make this visual a little bit more easy to understand, I'm gonna make one more new solid, and I'm going to apply the turbulent noise effect to it, which does something very similar. But instead of distorting the image, it's just generating a texture using the same turbulence calculations. So we're getting this texture that's just made up of black and white values, and I can scale this up or down just like the displacement. What the turbulent displace effect is doing is the exact same thing, but it's using those black and white values to drive displacement of the pixels of whatever layer we're applying it to. So the brightest pixels get shifted in one direction, the darkest pixels get shifted in another direction, and all these controls are just modifying that displacement map, the same as this turbulent noise texture, to generate unique distortions. So in addition to the size, we can also offset the texture. And as I move that, you can see it's literally shifting the texture around for the displacement. I could even grab it right here and be very free form with where I wanna place it. I could also increase the complexity. If I make this really high, I get something that looks totally different. Or we could leave it down at the default of one to keep it nice and simple. We also have the ability to change the evolution so that it just kind of animates in this wavy, liquidy way. And if I open up the evolution options, we can also check on this box to cycle the evolution, meaning that every time I cycle one revolution, so 360 degrees, it's going to be the exact same displacement texture. So if I just change the evolution revolutions and not these degrees, nothing changes because every cycle in that evolution loops. But we can also change the number of cycles in revolutions there are. So if I were to set this to say three, then it's only going to loop every three revolutions. So you can see as I increase that, it's changing every time and every third revolution cycles or loops. All right, let me reset this back to defaults, close up evolution options, and next we have the pinning options. Currently it's set to pin all, which means that it's leaving the edges of our layer completely undistorted. You can see that right up against the edge of the comp, the grid isn't really being distorted at all. But I could change that from pin all to none and then that is going to distort the edges. And you can see that we now are able to see the edge of the layer. So that's the purpose of pinning, is to hide those edges, basically. But we can also change that to just pin the horizontal edges, not the vertical ones, or the opposite, pin the vertical, or left, right, top, bottom. Any of these options will pin whatever it says it will. And on some of these, we have the option to resize the layer. If I scale this down so we can see all of the edges, and then I check resize, you can see at the top and bottom, what this is basically doing is expanding the layer beyond its bounds to allow us to see the entire contents with the distortion applied. So if we just did horizontal edges, then it's gonna shift those out. If I said none, then you can see that it's basically not cropping that layer and allowing the distortion to move beyond the bounds of it. So without that resize layer on, it crops it, and with resize layer on, it expands it out. And then finally, we have anti-aliasing for best quality, and this is basically just a low or high quality selector. So if you turn it on high, you'll get clearer, crisper edges, but if you can't really tell the difference, leave it on low because that's just going to give you a render hit. And that's it for Turbulent Displace. It's one of my favorite effects. I use it all the time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you want to support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.